In this video, I'll get the materials looking a little better and get a camera in place to render the scene. I'll start out in the Hypershade by choosing Window, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. This is where we can see our materials in a node-based view. I'll drag my cell wall material into the work area with the mouse wheel. I'm going to put a red edge glow on this so the cells kind of stand out. Then I'll go into the keys for the transparency and change it so it's partially transparent in the middle. Next, I'll put in a ramp shader by clicking on 2D textures and ramp. It's a rainbow gradient that I can change to become black and red. First, in this ramp, I'll make sure it's set to V-Ramp and delete the blue key by clicking on the X. I'll move the green down a little bit and then change its color out to black so in the incandescence, which looks like it's emitting light, the black is not emitting light. I'll leave the red alone as the color works well with my cells and with the mouse wheel I'll drag the ramp onto the cell wall material and choose incandescence. I need one more thing in here, a sampler node that looks at the direction. I'll click on Utilities under Maya and scroll down. What these utilities let me do is judge different conditions. I'll add in a sampler info and there's lots of different ways we can sample, facing direction, normals, and so forth. What I'm going to do is to drag with the mouse wheel from the sampler info onto the ramp and choose Other. It pulls up my connection editor, which lets me connect anything to anything, basically. I'll pick the facing ratio and set it to UV coordinates, V coordinate. Now we can see this material has a nice red glow around the edge. I'll close this connection editor and I'll repeat this process on my diploid cell so it matches. With the mouse wheel, I'll drag the diploid cell in and make a new ramp. I can pick my existing one and duplicate it, or simply make a new one. I'll press Ctrl D to duplicate that ramp, so it's called Ramp 2. This way I've got the same colors and positions. I'll take this ramp, drag it with the mouse wheel onto the diploid cell, and put it to the incandescence. Now what I'll do is put in my sampler node as well, sampler info, and with the mouse wheel drag it onto Ramp 2, again choosing Other, and attaching the facing ratio to the V coordinates. This way my now transparent diploid cell has a red edge on it. I'll need to key that, but I'm going to take care of the transparency first. In my animation, as I scrub forward, the mitosis occurs up through frame 72, and the fade occurs between roughly 72 and give or take 80. 94, give or take frame 90. I'll go under Window, Animation Editors, and Graph Editor and change this a bit. As you may have noticed, it's perfectly fine to go back and forth in your materials and in your animations to edit them. I'm going to make sure I get into that material by selecting it in my Hypershade again, choosing Window, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. I'll pick that cell wall to start, and with that material selected, there's the transparency red, green, and blue showing in the, in the graph editor. I'm going to take that key at frame 1, where the range is 0, or the value, and I'll put the transparency up. I'll put this up to 0.5, so the cell is semi-transparent. I'm going to leave the end transparency at 1 at frame 89, and I'll do the same on the diploid cell. I'll select it and make its transparency in the beginning 1 still, so it's totally invisible, and at the end it'll fade into 0.5. This way it fades into partial transparency. I'll test this out and see how it works. There's my partially transparent cell, there's the replication, mitosis, and the fade and they're transparent enough I can see my DNA. To test out how this looks in a rendering I'll click on the render scene or render current frame dialog and there they are midway through the change. Now I just need to key the incandescence. At frame 90 or so when I render this we can see that my cells are all very bright 
my original one is bright around the outside my diploid cells are showing in red what I'll do here then is to key that incandescence this fade occurs from 65 through 90 I'll go into the incandescence on the original cell making sure I select it and going into the material in the cell wall here's the incandescence and I can actually key these colors at frame 65 I'm going to right click and key that color by setting a key at frame 90 I'll scrub forward and take this down to black so the material does not have a glowing edge I'll right click and set a key now when I test render it at frame 90 there's my diploids I'll do the inverse on the diploid cells at frame 65 in their incandescence I'm going to take this color and slide it down to black and I'll right click and set a key at frame 90 then at the end of the transition I'll pull that up and make sure I pick that same red which is available right here in my color history right click and set a key now my materials are animated so at this point midway along the transition I see both at frame 90 when there's just the diploids I only see them and under frame 65 the diploids are not glowing just the original cell if you'd like you can get in and play with where these U and V ramp nodes sit to get a little more softness on that cell or back off the color if it's glowing too bright lastly I'll get my DNA looking good I'll select it making sure I pick the right object here if you'd like you can select by name or select across and then hold control to deselect there's my green and what I'm going to do is put a little bit of incandescence in so the DNA stands out I'll click on it and add a little bit of green into that DNA adding a little value and a little saturation in it doesn't have to be terribly bright but just so it really shows up nicely I'll do the same with the white again selecting the white DNA and increasing the incandescence a little bit so it looks fairly bright now in a render it's going to stand out cleanly against those cells and I'm ready to get a camera in place first I'll select my blend shape here and hide it choosing display hide selection I'll get a camera in by choosing create cameras camera our cameras in Maya are essentially the same between a camera camera and aim and camera aim and up the way we can think of it is a camera is a handheld camera aim is on a dolly or a crane and a camera aim and up prevents the camera from flipping over losing track of which way is up in the world I'll work in a camera and the first thing I'll always do is scroll down to object display and make the locator scale bigger here it is at five so that the camera is drawn bigger in the view I'll pull it back and increase the size of my transform with the plus key so I can see it pull it over and choose panels perspective camera one now in the camera I can spin around dolly back and get that DNA full in the frame I'll turn on my resolution gate and set up my render size by clicking on the render settings dialog I'm going to run this at 1280 by 720 so it's suitable for YouTube or Vimeo for example I'll put in the width at 1280 here's a height of 720 and I'm going to render from the camera view I'll set up a batch render it looks pretty good I've got my DNA full in the frame as well as my cell and I'm ready to see the mitosis in action up here I'll choose an image format you can render out a sequence and then use another program to put these together in a movie or we could render out for example an AVI I'll choose AVI and pick a suitable compression in this case none will work it'll be a big file and I'll compress it at another point alternately we can choose compression if we like and see how it looks here's an H264 and I'll click OK and I'll name this file we'll call it mitosis I'm rendering a multi-frame file making sure I'm choosing name extension multi-frame I'll put in the end frame I'm going to render out 120 frames so I have a little outside this way I've got a minute for it to hold at the end I'm ready to render I'll click on the Maya software tab 
and turn on some decent anti-aliasing, dropping down under edge anti-aliasing picking highest quality, and using a multi-pixel filter so that the edges of my cells are nice and smooth. I'll give it one quick last render test at full size and see how it looks. And there's my glowing cell with the DNA in the middle. We can always adjust color after test rendering, but it looks pretty good for now. I'll press F6 for rendering and choose Render and Batch Render. In Batch Render I can uncheck Use All Available Processors and put in the number of cores in the machine. In my case I have six and hit Batch Render and Close. It'll take a minute and render out all of our frames in that AVI and save it in the images directory in that Maya project. That's it for our DNA and our mitosis. We've got a blend shape and we have our cell animating. 